Usually surgeries are performed in a sterile environment and a trained surgeon and medical staff are there to make sure that all of the surgical incisions and of course everyone is administrating the proper medication. But sometimes in a matter of life and death, people have been faced with the harsh reality that they will have to perform the surgery on themselves. I don't know what reality that would be that would leave me in that situation, but some people on this list are trained medical professionals while others are actually just the average Joe like you and me. And these people are put into situations that they have to perform their own surgery or they will just be left there to die. Well, how's it going YouTube? I'm Reels for this one, Land and Do Not Sing, and welcome back to another most amazing top 10 video. So before I get started, I want to remind you guys of the new channel, Top 10 Central. Make sure you guys click right over here. If you guys are feeling down, you guys are a little bit sad, you guys need a little bit of a laugh, make sure you guys go check that out. We try to entertain you guys as much as possible. We try our best to be funny. All right, let's get into this one. This is the top 10 scary times a doctor or person has performed their own surgery. Okay, a very risky surgical procedure starts off this list in at number 10. In the 1920s, a medical student named Warner Frostman wanted to see if it was possible to reach the heart through the veins or arteries without the need for traumatic surgery. He believed that he could reach the heart through a vein in the arm, so he asked his professor if he can test this theory on a patient. Obviously, for liability reasons, his professor said no. But this didn't stop him. He decided to perform the surgery on himself. He tricked the nurse into thinking that he was going to perform the surgery on her, but instead he anesthesiized his own arm and started to advance the catheter into his heart. The surgery was a success, but he was dismissed from his program for violating the rules. But then 17 years later, he actually won a Nobel Prize for physiology and medicine for his part in the invention of cardiac catheterization. A biopsy climbs onto this list next up at number 9. An American doctor named Jerry Nelson was hired to spend a year at a very secluded scientific research station and this was located at the South Pole where she would be the only doctor there. Well during her time she discovered a lump on her right breast and after talking with other doctors in the states she decided that it would be best to perform a biopsy on herself. So in case you didn't know a biopsy is when you take a sample of a tissue from the body to examine it more closely. Well the material that she had on site was too outdated so the results were inconclusive. So so a military plane dropped off new supplies, so she performed the biopsy again, and this time it showed her that she had cancer. So what did she do? Well, she administered her own chemotherapy and once she was back in the United States, after multiple surgeries and complications, she finally went into remission. Up next, number 8, we have kidney stones. A military surgeon found himself in a lot of pain when he was diagnosed with kidney stones. By the time he turned 27 years old, he had already been under the knife about 5 times to try to remove it. Some of those botched surgeries will cause him to have long lasting complications. Well, years later, he decided that he was going to remove the sixth stone himself. Using a mirror, he used the scars from the other surgeries as as a guideline and then he began cutting. He opened himself up, located his bladder and found the sixth kidney stone. He was able to remove it and the self surgery was a success. But when his kidney stones came back years later, he decided that you know it would be best if he didn't perform the surgery on himself. Instead he opted for the non-invasive technique and that's when they crush the stone and they remove it through a small hole. Well you know what that was probably a wise decision. DIY plastic surgery takes us all the way to number seven. A criminal named a Tatsuya Isayashi was being convicted of murder and other brutal charges, but he evaded from being arrested for two and a half years because he changed the way he looked through plastic surgery that he did on himself. Is this real life right now? He cut off his lower lip, he dug some moles off his cheek with a box cutter, and he used a needle and thread to alter his nose until it looked completely different. I think I would rather just go to prison than do this on myself. Oh, and a lot of these procedures were actually done in a public bathroom. I can only imagine how many infections he probably got. That's why he was unrecognizable. He was actually eventually caught when he tried to do more plastic surgeries. Well, he got caught because he went to a professional and they probably recognized him. I guess he should have just stuck with doing them himself. The removal of a musket ball brings us to number six. During the Revolutionary War, women were not allowed to be enlisted in the army, but Deborah Sampson disguised herself as a man. She changed her name to Robert Shirtliff, and then she enlisted herself in the continent 
Continental Army. She ended up getting injured while on the line of fire and a musket ball lodged into her leg. She needed surgery but was scared to go under the knife because they would find out that um, she's not a man, she's actually a woman, she'd get in a lot of trouble. So she did the next best thing, she performed the surgery on herself. Although the surgery was a success, it definitely wasn't professionally done, so she did suffer from permanent injuries. A doctor who removed his own appendix takes us to number five. During an expedition to the Antarctic, a Russian surgeon became seriously ill. He needed to have his appendix taken out or else he would go into septic shock. And since he was the only doctor on the team, he realized that he wanted to live, he would have to perform the surgery on himself. So he came up with a detailed plan for how the operation would go and assigned people specific roles. He gave himself a local anesthetic, cut off his skin and removed his appendix. I'd probably faint on the first little baby incision. I'd be like, ah! I mean, no one should ever see what their inside of their like body looks like. Up next, number four, we have an amputation on the right arm. Aaron Ralston made international headlines with his survival story. He was on a cannoneering trip alone when a heavy boulder fell and pinned his right forearm down. After spending five days trying to break free, he became so dehydrated and delirious, so he prepared to cut off his dying arm. He used a dull blade and some pliers to cut through the tendons and bones. He managed to break free, walk eight miles, and rappel down a six. 65 foot cliff in order to get himself help. This definitely is one of the most intense survival stories I've ever heard of, and I'm not sure how many people would be able to do this in order to survive. Well, a lot of you guys probably know the story I'm talking about because it got turned into a Hollywood movie. Moving to number three, we have an appendectomy and inguinal hernia repair. These surgeries sound super complicated, and you know what? They are. So I was shocked to find out that a doctor actually performed these surgeries on himself. Doctor Evan Kane was a chief surgeon at a hospital in New York City and he wanted to prove to the world that general anesthesia was unnecessary for minor operations. So what did he do? Well, he used himself as a test subject and decided to remove his own appendix with only a local anesthetic. He propped himself up on the operating table and with the mirror over his abdomen and also there were three other doctors there just in case, but he managed to remove his appendix all on his own, but the fun didn't stop there. When he was 70, he performed an even even more complicated surgery on himself to fix a hernia. He would have easily killed himself, but he managed to perform it in under two hours without any complications. I mean, is there anything this man can't do? Trepanation brings us to number two. For those of you guys who don't know, trepanation is when a hole is surgically drilled or scraped into the skull. So you might be surprised to find out that a person who performed trepanation on herself isn't even a doctor. Back in the 80s, Amanda Fielding wanted surgeons to do this procedure on her skull to apparently improve the quality of her brain. Well, since it wasn't a medically necessary procedure, she was shut down and Amanda decided to do it on herself. She took some anesthesia and used a dentist's drill to put a hole in her own skull. This just seemed like a recipe for disaster. Neurosurgeons spent a ton of time in medical school, but apparently Amanda thinks she can do it on herself by reading a WikiHow article. She lost a liter of blood, but she felt better after the procedure. But I'm going to argue that her mental health is not okay. She definitely needs to reevaluate her life decisions. Topping her list at number one, we have a C-section. This operation took place back in March of 2000 in a remote Mexican village. Access to healthcare was basically non-existent, and this mother knew exactly what needed to be done. After hours of unproductive labor, she was scared that she was going to lose her baby. So she drank these strong alcoholic beverages, took her kitchen knife, and began to cut her stomach open. The procedure took one hour and she was able to deliver her own baby. One of her other kids ran to grab a nurse who repositioned her intestines and then they sewed up her incision. She eventually made it to the nearest hospital that was eight hours away. Is this real life right now? And even though she needed a lot of treatment, she was released 10 days later. So this woman did what she had to do and I bet she has no regrets. Well, there you guys have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I was your host, Landon Do Not Sing. And I'll see you all in the next most amazing top 10 video. Okay, so usually surgeries are performed in a sterile, uh, a sterile, uh, uh, appendectomy. Moving things along, number three, we have the append, uh, uh, appendectomy. The appendectomy. Appendectomy. The appendectomy. Appendectomy. And, in ingual oh f appendectomy and ingual hernia repair. And, and the appendectomy and ingual her <laughs> the impen and appendectomy and an ingual and also <laughs>
Ah, f me.